Hello and welcome to the Wood Framing Wall Plus Getting Started video number 8. In this video, we are going to show you how to split interior and exterior wall finish layers into Revit parts. For those of you who don't know what Revit parts are, basically, by selecting a Revit element with layered structures, like a wall for example, and then clicking on the feature called Create Parts, Revit splits your element layers into separate parts. You can turn the visibility on or off by controlling the part visibility parameter in Properties panel. Also, you can easily control the shape of each part. In addition, these parts can be scheduled and divided into smaller parts. For example, I could divide this interior wall wall layer into separate sheets manually, but this would take me ages if I had to do this for an entire project. That's why the Wall Plus software comes with an automated solution that enables you to split parts based on predefined sheeting or paneling configuration. In order to split wall layer parts into sheets or panels, we need to link sheathing or paneling configurations with the selected wall type. But before that, let's quickly go through the wall type layers first. As you can see, I have created a new wall type which has the same 120mm timber frame structure. However, I've also added two internal wallboard layers and a rain screen panel layer for exterior finish. These are the layers that we are going to link with the sheeting and paneling configurations. Plus, notice that the second internal wall finish layer contains a duplicated wallboard material. There are no differences in terms of properties between these materials apart from the name, and I will explain you shortly why. So, let's select this wall instance and click on Link Wall button. Let's begin with internal layers. The first step is to choose the framing layer. When it comes to parts, there are three framing layers. Two for sheathing and one for paneling. Sheathing is usually applied to drywall layers like plasterboards or gypsum wallboards, and it can also be linked with engineered wood layers like OSB boards. In the meantime, paneling is used for insulation layers and exterior finish panels, like ventilated facades. But in this tutorial, we will stick to the basics. So, for both gypsum wallboard layers, we're going to choose sheathing. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it's very important to have two different drywall finish layer material names when there are two drywall finish layers on one side or on both sides of the wall. In sheathing configurations, it's possible to define settings for two separate sheathing layers and now the software knows that this is the first and this is the second sheathing layer. The next step is to link both layers with the same sheathing configuration. Currently, we only have one default configuration, but you can always have as many as you need. For the external finish layer, we're going to choose paneling. And as you can see, there are two default configurations. In this case, we're going to pick panel. If we want to, we can apply the other configuration to, for example, insulation layer between studs. But let's keep things simple here and move on to ticking boxes. Since we've linked interior and exterior finish layers with configurations, we must not forget to tick boxes for these layers under Split Parts column. If we don't do this, the software just won't split these layers. Also, under Exclude Parts tab, make sure to untick boxes of those layers that you want to be visible in the model. Otherwise, the selected parts will be excluded and not visible in the model. Finally, you can tick the box under Split By for your selected framing layer. For example, if you had two or more framing layers in your wall, you could pick one that you want to use as a reference for splitting parts. As a result, the sheeting or paneling layers would be split by selected framing layer. But instead, let's press OK. We need to make sure that the wall instance or a framing element is selected, and then click on Split Parts. If you cannot see the result, don't forget to change your part visibility parameter to show parts. Right now, for instance, you can see the internal sheathing layers that were automatically split using predefined sheathing configuration. Each part also contains information that can be used in shop drawings and manufacturing. Also, we can turn the view around and look at the exterior layer parts that were split using paneling configuration. We can also switch to the floor plan to find that the inner sheathing layer is split at every second stud, while the outer sheathing layer is not. Paneling, in the meantime, is also split differently. That's how the sheathing and paneling configurations are currently set. We will look at them shortly. So right now I've set the part visibility to show both, and we are going to make changes to the wall. When you make any changes to your wall, for example you make it shorter, 
we would need to update the frame first and then split parts again. In order to save time, we can go to the Frame Configurations dialog, navigate to Modify Settings, and then tick this box. Then, when using Update by Wall Link to update your frame, you can see that parts are updated automatically as well. From now on, any future changes within the wall can be easily adapted to the frame and parts by using Update Frame button. Now we're going to explore configurations and we'll only look at sheathing because there aren't many differences between sheathing and paneling configurations. So the dialog layout is very similar to framing configurations. We can switch to different sheathing configurations at the top, create new one, or rename it. On the left hand side, we have different sheathing settings and each setting has tabs at the top with some specific settings and a preview window. To be more specific, all settings from the left browser, apart from sheathing dimensions, have tabs for inner and outer sheathing. Moreover, whenever I move my mouse from the first inner layer to the second inner layer settings, the preview window highlights which layer we are about to modify. In the meantime, the plus symbol suggests that this is the internal side of the wall and the minus suggests that it's the external side. Paneling configurations have similar settings except that there are no tabs for inner and outer sheeting or settings for first and second layers. Also, there are some settings that you won't find in the sheeting configurations, but all other settings are almost the same. Okay, so let's quickly jump through the most basic settings in the sheeting configurations. In the sheeting dimensions, you can define part sizes. We are now looking at vertical sheeting layout, but if I move my mouse to the right, the preview image changes to the horizontal sheeting layout. You can choose which layout you want to use in sheeting layout settings by ticking one of these two boxes. For example, if you pick parallel to stud, the software will apply vertical layout, and by choosing perpendicular, the software will use horizontal layout. In addition, you can control top and bottom extension settings. You can also choose which placement direction you want to have. For instance, the first layer is placed at the start of the wall and the second is placed from the end. Another important feature is aligned with studs or joists. Right now, if you remember, the inner layer is split at the studs. That's because this box here is ticked. In division profile settings, you can add vertical and horizontal gaps between sheets. It's also possible to add division profiles if, for example, you want to have tapered or angled sheet part edges. In opening settings, you can control part offsets from openings. Finally, there are wall connections, aka wall joints. All wall joints have the same settings, but different tabs. For those of you who are not yet familiar with the wall joint tabs, you can watch the Wall Plus Getting Started video number 4 about the wall joint framing configurations. So the key settings here are the layer extension and offset distance. For example, layer extension controls how the sheeting part is extended at the wall joint end, while the offset distance offsets the part from the end of the wall joint. So now let's make some changes to the sheathing configurations. As you can see, I've drawn a section view through the wall and floor joint, and we're going to create a 5mm tolerance gap at the bottom of these two parts. In the corner view, meanwhile, we're going to extend this part up to the butt connection stud and also make this part shorter up to this part. Both wallboard layers are 13 mm thick, so we have to keep this number in mind. And to create a 5 mm gap, I need to type in 5 into the bottom extension parameter for both parts. And in the L connection settings, I'm going to extend the second sheeting layer of the L connection end by 13 millimeters and make the first layer at the butt connection end shorter by the same distance. Then click OK. So let's pick random elements from each wall, then click on split parts. As a result, parts have been automatically updated after making changes to the sheathing configurations. So that's it for this getting started video. Thank you very much for watching and until the next time.